But the rest of the rounds, bro, he has struck him um, in every angle. Like, Jared Kanania tried a couple of times to go for the takedown, but he's right to say anti takedown defense is just so good. His defense has really improved, I must say. I'm impressed. Um, let's go down here, Adewale. Adewale, how impressed are you with his position as a performance? And does anybody beat him in the middle way? I don't see anybody doing that, bro. Oh, man, I feel like, honestly, I, Israel looks a little predictable, in my opinion. You know, the way that fight played out, Jared Kananir was not able to land anything i i thought israel was going to get the knockout victory going against that guy just because israel has very good striking abilities and a serious reach advantage over cannonier but cannonier was able to survive five rounds he was looking gassed out towards the third and fourth round but still he was able to keep on going hard at the end of the day i feel like Israel probably won four rounds, but Jared Kananier was able to make those rounds closer, especially when he had Israel's back against the cage. Each time he had Israel's back against the cage, he was able to score some punches on the inside and some tie kicks, and that just made the rounds close. So it wasn't a victory in dominant fashion for Israel Adesanya, but he did what he had to do to win. And for that reason, I feel like he looked slightly more vulnerable, especially considering his last performance against um, the guy from Australia. That fight wasn't a dom dominating victory as well. Listen, maybe I'm just being hard criticizing his performance. At the end of the day, he did what he had to do to win, and congratulations to him. But he looked a little bit more vulnerable, in my opinion. But I disagree, bro. This is, there was no vulnerability, you know, in the in the in the part of Israel in this fight. How do you win? How do you win four of uh, four rounds out of five and outstrike the the opponent and li literally just cruise cruise over him, bro? Jerry Canonier's team they had a fantastic great plan and everything. You cannot like that. I, I, you, I think you do a research about. Uh, about the coach of Kanonier, bro, he has a fantastic coach that I understand the MMA, you know, um, from A to Z, you know. Adesanya didn't didn't do some of the things his trainer wanted him to do, you know. His trainer asked him to like after you land, you know, go back to the neutral ground, you know. I just say I wanted to like follow. You can you, you can tell there was a time he he, he stunned Kanonier with a jab and tried to follow it up. You know you know normally when he stunned you and he followed he followed up with his barrage of punches stuff like that. Kanonier was able to move out the way and reset. So I just kind of saw that like mm, fuck it, let me you no know, go. Let me not over rush this now. Let me not rush this. Let me let me let me let me take my time. You know so you've got to give I just say I'll, Lots of credit. I think he should be more active, but yeah, I think I think inactive. I think inactivity is. I'm seeing inactivity like some of his like his, his, his skill set. Something like ah, I don't know, man. Inactivity is playing a part right here. But it's nice to know that his next fight uh, who his next fight is against. You know. Yeah, that's a good fight, man. Um, yo, <laughs> like. There's been some bad blood, some trash talking between him and that guy. I can't remember his name. The guy that he called Alex, out Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira. Yes, yes. That's going to be a good fight. And that's going to be more exciting. I also feel like that fight might bring out the best in Israel. Because in my opinion, I feel like Jared Cannonier, even though he lost the majority of those rounds, he made the fight closer towards the end of each round. And that just re removed that, uh, that um, how do I describe it now? The aura of being a dominant champion. 
that took it out from Israel at this point. But that's just my opinion. It's good to have you in the building, this Yama. This is what you think. This is what you think. However, like, I, I still think the inactivity, you know, is playing a part right here. You know, taking a, a huge layoff and coming. Yeah, I think it's not the right thing for a champion to do. But he still, he still managed to win, you know, uh, four out of five. And, you know, I was striking a. Uh, Jerry Cannonier. Remember, keep in mind that Jerry Cannonier has a great chain, huh? He's not a pushover or stuff like that. And he got stunned a couple of times there. He's ready to say, I wanted to follow it up, but he just, uh, Cannonier had a very good pl game, game plan. You know, when he saw that, he, he, he reset. You know, let's get Brown here, um, ACMR, because he would likely break it more down, you know, for us. Uh, ACMR, what do you make of this fight right here? Is, um, uh, is Radisson declining or what is going on with him? I think this is not a matter of him declining. I think this is a matter of other killers in the division figuring him out. And again, I do not think it has to do with inactivity. Israel has been more active than Robert Whittaker, he's been more active than Kevin Gastelum, he's been more active than Derek Bronson, he's been more active, he's been more active than um, the guys in the first 10 of that division, okay? Um, in the average, he fights twice in a year. Others don't have that average record in that division. So Israel still is busy. But then I think that these guys are beginning to gradually figure him out. Yet, yet, you could see the high-level skills of Adesone. How he switches stance, how he levels up, how he faints, okay, how he draws you in. And I mean, have you seen Easy throw jabs like he did today? I haven't seen him jab like he did today. Those jabs were popping Jared's head backward. Jared is, as he is called, he's a killer gorilla. Jared is the dark horse of the division. Jared came into UFC as a heavyweight. A lot of persons might not know this. He came in as a heavyweight, okay, knocked people out um, in heavyweight when he came into MMA, and then scaled down to light heavyweight and was beating almost everybody in the light heavyweight except for Glover Texera, the immediate past light heavyweight champion, and Jan Blaowicz, who lost to, um, uh, to um, Glover Texera. And then Dominic Kreis. And he felt like he would be faster if he goes down to middleweight. Since he came down to middleweight, the only person that has beaten him was Robert Whittaker. And that was on decision. Okay. But he knocked Robert Whittaker down once or twice. I can't remember now. Okay. He gave Whittaker a tough fight. And don't forget, Whittaker is a killer by every, every standard. And now he faces Israel Adesoya and got absolutely, completely outclassed. But for his corner, led by his coach, Crouch, who I was saying coach versus coach, athlete versus athlete, okay, at the end of every round. Like um, BBC did say, his coach is one of the best in MMA. Perhaps, but for coaching, it would have been even worse for him. I mean, look at the scoring, 49, 46, 49, 46, 50, 45. This is the master class by every standard. So um, I don't think Israel is declining. I just think the other guys are figuring him out. Having said that, my heart is now pumping really fast because his next fight is against his boogeyman. It's against his... I don't know how to qualify Alex Pereira. Alex stands like a tank. You might not know that he fought in this card. Okay. He fought Sean Strickland, the number fourth rank middleweight person. And in the first round, he hooked to the left chain and the pop on the on the um on the forehead. Sean Strickland, who has not lost in four years, folded. But for the intervention of the referee, it might have been another story. So, mm, are we about to see the end of Israel Adesoya? I don't know. 
will he take his revenge against um, Alex Pereira? We can only wait to see. But then but is I this, thought, is it is it is it the Alex Pereira that knocked him out in, uh, as a kickboxer then? Yes, twice. Yes, that's the guy. The guy is in the MMA now. He wasn't. He wasn't before, right? Yeah, this is his um, sixth fight in MMA, third fight in UFC, and he's been finishing guys since he came into MMA. Although he's lost one, all right, but he's been finishing guys in a very dominant fashion. Okay, just like Easy was finishing guys when he came into um, MMA. So we can only wait and see how it goes. But what I'm very happy about is that City Kickboxing, um, Israel Adesoya's team had a brilliant showing tonight, apart from one of their their um, mates, Ridu, who lost in 45 seconds. But at least Alexander Volkanovsky, the fight immediately before Easy, who is the number two pound for pound in the world, came up, put on the masterclass, and then Easy closed the day with another masterclass. Um, congratulations to their camp. Congratulations to their coach, Jim Grayman. To add to it, though, Alex Pereira is a Brazilian, right? You know. Yes, he's, he's Brazilian, yeah. You know, and, you know, look, I've, got, I've watched some of his uh, kickboxing matches and stuff like that. He got big, got big a lot of times in kickboxing as well. Um, he wasn't a monster or so like that, you know. Of course, he... I think, I think he had 33, 33 and 5. He had 33 and 5. Easy had 70... I can't remember now, but Easy had far, far more record than he, this kid, he bro, did have. I think Alex Pereira, even though he might have a chance, he like you know, um, he might he will always have a chance because he's a he's a very powerful puncher. However, I believe his traditional skill set will up will, would upset him. He would be like he would be confused out there. You know, you'll be, be, yeah. be looking to, to, to you'll be looking to land one punch or you land something, or the but he wouldn't get it. He's what they say, just too smart. But we'll see, though. You know. Yeah, um, we'll wait. Yeah. We'll see. Once he's at the same, listen. Once he's at the same, what if the when that fight happens? Once he's at the same goes past round two, just know it's a cruise for Adesanya without being troubled. Without like if he goes by round two or three. And he, he will figure him out easily. Just the same way. Look at uh, Jared Cannonier, bro. From run three, he figured him out. You know, he didn't have problem with run, run one, run two. He <clears throat> run one, run two. But on three, Jared, Jared Cannonier, you know, started doing some things that that caught uh, um, Israel the Sonia off guard. But he quickly realized that. Mm, this guy is the same kind of breed he for fighting. You know, it's, it's just something he does naturally. So, Alex Pereira, no doubt, is a pop, powerful puncher. You know, he's a he's a dynamic puncher. He looks very skinny, but <laughs> don't let that fool you. The guy is a monster, just same as uh, this one. Yeah, but yeah. I, I believe yeah. skill set, skills pay the bills, bro. You know, does he want to get like he's he's gonna be getting tagged by j jabbed to the face? We'll see how strong his chain is as well, you know. We'll see how good his chain is. Yeah, bro, uh, uh, Diwali. Yeah, man, that was uh, that was a good breakdown from Isiyama. Man, I appreciate you guys. I've learned a lot more from, you know, just listening to you guys. And I'm, I'm just see. I, I feel like Israel's experience will play a huge role in that fight against Pereira. That's what I just think. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah, bro, we're gonna we're gonna break this down, break this down more for sure later, and um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, you see, man. Yeah, bro. So, if you were to be Israel right now, and what would your next move be in terms of the training method you you will apply? It would be to just overwhelm Alex Pereira. You know, concentrate more on overwhelming Alex Pereira in the mixture of mixed martial arts because Alex is still new to MMA all right um, yes he's got good boxing and he's a kickboxer but all of those mix that comes into mixed martial arts might still 
be overwhelming him. Those are the things he should capitalize on. I think if he wants to stand toe to toe with Alex um, and just make a complete strike fight, it might not really, really come out in his favor because I've seen Alex, that dude is pretty good. What's his gas so tank? What's his gas tank like? Again, like I said, he's new to MMA. He has not gone that round yet. Okay. So, so which comes back to what you were be, saying be, earlier on. Basically, if he's ready to take it to the deep end, he might, he, yeah. might, he might not know how to how to cope afterwards. Exactly, which is still part of the mix. Because mix kickboxing mix is boxing. way different from, from MMA. Exactly. Exactly. Mm, interesting. So, guys, you heard it from our brother. Um... Adewale and Isioma. Nice to have you guys on here and maybe we'll get you guys on again later and to break down the Pedera uh at the Soyan fight. Bro Pedera is there, so he's thinking he will get I mean it's gonna be interesting because Pedera's confidence, you know, it seemed like okay, I've beaten you before. So, but he's giving me the Dylan White AG vibe, you know. Like Dylan White thinking, you know, I be I knocked it down, and, you know, the amateur was like so easy. I'm gonna do it in the pro, so easy stuff like that. I know it's different, you know, but he's giving me that vibe, like that confidence. But we saw what he did, taking Dylan White for the first time into deep waters and you know sinking him. <laughs> I love him here, numbers.